More on our top story tonight. Malaysian Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin and his cabinet to quarantine for two weeks after coming into contact with a COVID-19 case. More than 430 new infections have been reported across the country, a record daily jump. Melissa Goh joins us live now. Mel, will the Prime Minister and the Cabinet's quarantine you know, affect the handling of the COVID-19 pandemic as cases surge? Well, Prime Minister Mohidin, uh, in a statement issued this afternoon, said that it won't affect, affect that all the um, cabinet ministers, deputies, including himself now under home surveillance order for 14 days, will not affect the running of the government. Also, he will be working from home and chairing the meeting online and so on. Now, this happened after one of the ministers, the religious affairs minister, uh, Dr. Zulkifli uh, al-Bakri, he was tested positive of COVID-19. Now, it's worth to mention that he returned from Sabah before the state election on September 26. So there was no requirement back then for everyone returning from Sabah to undergo swap and no swap and also uh, to undergo home quarantine. So he went on with his official duties. He would travel to other states and he met lots of people. Now, having said that, you know, for us returning from Sabah, we underwent um, throat and nose swap as well and put under 14 days of home quarantine until result is negative. So the public isn't happy at all. The public is angry. They blame the government. Uh, while the government blamed the illegal migrant or the undocumented migrants, um, influx of migrants from uh, Sabah, they've costed the flare, cost the flare up over there. Now, the health director general, Dr. Noor Hisham, said, please end the blame game and let's work together. They've done before to flatten the curve. Let's do it again and flatten the curve one more time. But at the same time, incidentally, he's also been put under home quarantine, under home surveillance order for 14 days because he was also involved in the same meeting chaired by the Prime Minister on Saturday or National Security Council assessing the situation of the pandemic after the Sabah state election. So it will be interesting to see how the government is now going to work together to contain the outbreak at the same time assuring the public that the government is on top of this. Glenda, please. And there is... And there is some urgency as well to it, Mal. Cases have hit a new daily high. So what's being done to beat this new wave of infections? Well, for starters, of the 400 over cases uh, reported, half of it due to the prison cluster in Qadar, uh, while the rest from mostly are from the East Malaysian state of Sabah. Now, already authorities over there have locked down the East Coast from Semporna, Ladatu, uh, Tawa, all the way to Kuna. It's been put under lockdown. Now, starting tomorrow, midnight onwards, the West Coast, Kota Kinabalu, the state capital, as well as the surrounding area of Utapan and Penampang, the densely populated, will be put under conditional MCO or uh, mandatory movement control, whereby schools will be closed, restaurants only for dine-in only, so there will be stricter uh, enforcement as well. While along the coast, the uh, enforcement authorities from the Navy to the Coast Guards and the Marine Police are now working together, stepping up surveillance and border control to make sure that there's no more influx of migrant workers whom they blame in bringing in COVID-19 and infecting the rest. And Sabah, the election has just multiplied it. Brenda, Steve? Okay, many thanks for that, Melissa Goh, speaking to us from Kuala Lumpur.